bring us new life. And he brings us freedom. Freedom from sin and freedom from the consequence of sin, our death. We proclaim at Pascha that Christ has risen over and over. We celebrate Pascha almost every Sunday, as we do today. Because that conquering of death was the most important thing we needed. Now, if that's the case, that this is the greatest news the world has ever heard, what's wrong? What's wrong with the world? The world hears the gospel message and by and large responds with a pass. No thank you. Not interested. Too busy. Even those within the Christian faith, at least in the first world, and coming soon to the second and the third world, are not only not joining Christianity by and large, they're leaving it. Christianity is shrinking in the world today. How is that possible? We could write it off by saying our modern lives are busy, that we're easily distracted, that we have so many other options for our attention that will entertain us much more than trying to live by the Christian faith. But I think it's deeper than that. That might explain why people don't enter Christianity as much as perhaps they used to. It doesn't explain why anyone would ever leave it. And it doesn't explain more personally for you and I why it doesn't seek in any deeper than it does. Why we find ourselves struggling to make our faith important when it's not Sunday morning. I think the answer to that question is in today's epistle. And I'm going to ask you to work with me a little bit this morning because there is so much importance, as there is in any epistle, in any scripture. But I want us to look very carefully because I think most of Christian faith is misunderstood, dare I say, by most Christians. And I would even venture to say that many of us have misunderstood what it means to be a Christian. And so we need to work a little bit hard this morning. If you want to look at your epistle in the bulletin, feel free. It's on the inside cover. St. Paul begins his epistle in the reading today, talking to the Galatians, and he says, Brethren, you know that a man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I will tell you that most Christians hear that message, but don't hear that message. They hear that if we are saved by faith, as most of our Protestant brothers and sisters will tell you, is the core foundation of their faith. What they don't say but often mean is that what we do really doesn't matter. If we say we believe in Jesus Christ, if we go by the name Christian and take that name for ourselves, then we believe in Him. And others would tell us we're saved. We're going to find out if we look carefully at the Scripture, that's not the case. At least not in the way most people misunderstand that Scripture. For most Christians... The idea that faith in Christ frees us from works of the law sounds like a bargain. Oh, I can believe in Jesus. And what I do doesn't really matter because I believe in Jesus. If that were the case, why would St. Paul in this very same letter to the Galatians, in chapter 5, three chapters later from today's reading, say the following, If you are led by the Spirit... You are not under the law. Sounds good. Freed from the law, free from our obligations, what we do doesn't matter. But it goes on. He says, now the works of the flesh are plain. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery. We think, okay, well, 
I haven't done any sorcery lately. Maybe I'm not so bad. But the list goes on. Enmity. Strife. Jealousy. Anger. Selfishness. Dissension. Party spirit. Envy. Drunkenness. Carousing. And the like. We are all guilty of many of those. And listen carefully to what St. Paul says in this same letter to the Galatians. I warn you, as I've warned you before, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't write those words. I'm reminding you and I'm reminding myself of those words so that we don't misunderstand when St. Paul tells us that we are saved by faith and not by works of the law. To understand what he means, let's keep reading. So we are not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Sounds simple, sounds easy. What does he mean by belief in Jesus Christ? Let's keep reading in verse 17. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we ourselves were found to be sinners, is Christ then an agent of sin? And St. Paul answers the question, certainly not. In other words, if because of what we claim to be faith in Christ, we go on sinning, what we are saying is by that faith in Christ, that it is because of Christ that we sin. Which is why St. Paul answers so profoundly, certainly not. This is the clearest verse that tells us that faith in Christ does not justify our sins. It doesn't wipe them away. It's not magic. If we say that we sin and it's okay because we believe in Christ, then we do what St. Paul says. We make Christ an agent of sin. But that's not where he's pointing us to go. Where is he pointing us? Let's keep reading. But if I build up again those things which I tore down, then I prove myself a transgressor. What is he talking about? He's talking about the sins that we tore down when we enter the life in Christ. For those of us who are baptized as babies, that means that we can point backwards to an event we probably don't remember. But that if we continue in the Christian faith, we accept and we say, from that point on, from the moment of our baptism, we tear down anything that was before. Any sin, any passion, any wrongdoing. And St. Paul tells us how he has done this. For I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. That I might live to God. St. Paul's assumption, not even statement, his assumption is that we live to God. That we have already torn down those sins of the past. They are in the past and we now live to God. How did St. Paul do that? He continues. And this last verse of today's reading is the key to understanding the whole thing. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. Those of us that were here on Wednesday night for Becoming Truly Human saw in a short clip of the video from the movie The Passion of the Christ just what crucifixion is. We see it in the icon. We see our Lord giving Himself completely in love for us. And St. Paul says that He has been crucified with Christ. St. Paul goes on, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is so far from the idea of cheap grace. That by faith we believe and therefore it doesn't matter what we do. That our faith saves us. Our faith does save us. But the faith that says, 
I have been crucified with Christ. The faith that says, I put away everything from my past. And if I perhaps stumble back into it, then I rush back to God and I beg His mercy. Today's Gospel is one where we see the transformation of somebody before and after Christ. Before, subject to a legion, a whole army of demons that made him think a place to live was in the cemetery, sleeping in the graves. St. Paul offers us a different version. He says, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. St. Paul lives his life in the flesh, with his body, in faith. His actions are taken in faith. In faith to the one who loved him and gave himself for him. Only by remembering what Christ has done for us, only by seeing the absolute strength and power and completeness of his love, can we do what those who tried to follow the law could not. We could follow God and live by faith in his Son. I'm going to talk about this more in the future, but whenever you hear the word faith, I don't want you to think faith as it's been used and misused in today's world. I want you to hear the word trust. If you go to your doctor and he brings you some news that you don't like, but he gives you a way to deal with your sickness, whether medication or surgery or whatever his recommendations are, you may not want to do those things, but you do them. And somebody asks you, why are you doing that? Why are you going in for those treatments and all that difficulty? What do you say? I have faith in my doctor. What kind of faith do you have? You don't believe in him as God. You don't say he's going to wipe away your sickness magically. You trust him. You trust your doctor. You trust him and the way he's telling you to live. And because you trust him, you do it. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what will bring us to a living faith. Not a faith that's located somewhere in our brains, an idea that we happen to agree with. That's not faith. Faith is trust. Faith is saying to God who loves us and gave himself for us, I trust you. And because I trust you, I do what you tell me to do. St. Paul doesn't tell us that either we are perfect or we're nothing. What he tells us is that the way of Jesus Christ is the way of life. That if we're going to stumble along that way, that in that same faith, we come back. We come back, especially through the Holy Sacrament of Confession. We come back. We don't say, well, it's uncomfortable to say my sins out loud. I don't know the new priest yet. We don't make all kinds of excuses. We accept our faith and the love that God offers us in the chance to come back. And we act on faith in the Son of God, who from the cross prayed for all of us when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't want us to be confused. I don't want us to misunderstand the gospel. When we say we live by faith in Christ, it doesn't mean that what we do doesn't matter. It means that what we do does matter. That that's how we live our faith, as St. Paul says, in our flesh. It's not only how we try to do what's right, it's how we do it. 
It's how we finally succeed in conquering our sins and our passions. Because we look at the one who first loves us. Who gave himself for us. And what the law couldn't do, the love of God, especially the love of Christ from the cross, does do for us. You and I have tried to be good. We've tried to live the way the church tells us to live. We've tried to do right. And so often we failed. The church tells us to look to Christ. To see Jesus on the cross. That's why we make the sign of the cross. We do it on ourselves. It's why when the priest blesses you, he does it with the sign of the cross. Because only by the cross of Christ and the love that he shows us from there are we given the strength and the motivation to really live by faith. It's time for us to look again and look deeper at Christ. To see Him. To see the love for Him that we cannot deny when we see Him. And because we see His love, then we love by the way He commanded us. To love Him with all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.